Hello, fellow Hornet pilots. <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, FA-18 Hornet Flight School campaign, campaign development video. It's another video where I'm covering what I'm putting together for pilots who need a training course that will take them from no experience in the Hornet all the way up to being reasonably confident in the field. I'm not trying to make you an expert. This is not an in-depth, grainy detail, teach you every single thing about the Hornet. It's intended to improve upon the lessons that you get from when you buy the Hornet and package package that information in a format that naturally progresses you from not understanding anything all the way up to I know how the Hornet works and I'm capable of learning the rest of it on, rest of it on my own. So as I said in the beginning, I start out each of my videos giving a quick summary because I know some people are jumping into this and they have no idea what, what's going on here. I've, I've made a lot of videos about this so far, so I always like to do a quick summary so that if you, if you don't like that, just kind of skip ahead until you hear me saying something you haven't heard before. The, the training course itself is broken up into four blocks, four blocks of lessons. The first block is the navigation block where you learn how to you know, fly the Hornet and find things, navigate to things, manually enter waypoints, follow waypoints, uh, all that kind of stuff. Use your radios to navigate to various sources. Once you finish that, and there's a less, there's a there's a test at the end that proves that that combines all of that together and, sh and proves that you know how to do that stuff. After that, um, the next thing you do is there's a training. I, I've designated this as a, an air to ground training range over here because it's nice and flat and it's easy to find things. And you go through learning how to do all of the air to ground stuff, CCIP bombing, laser bombing, uh, Mavericks, harms for SAM sites, um, you know, guns, all that stuff. And also learn just basic survival strategies for going into attack targets without getting shot down. So how to use chaff and flare or how to use especially flares to fight to flare off man pads and things like that. Staying high anytime you're going to do any kind of manual bombing, stay as high as you can, stuff like that. Now we're in the air to air block. Um, and there's a test after that that shows that you know how to use all of your systems to do that. And then there's an, now we're in the air to air block um, and I've completed the rough draft for all of that. I haven't done any testing for any of it, but the missions are all laid out. Uh, for this one, we're doing IR missiles, and that's relatively easy because IR missiles are pretty simple. We just talk about how the IR missile works, how it looks for a heat signature, and uh, how you need to get the seeker head lined up with the target that you're trying to find so that the, the, the seeker head on the missile itself is able to lock onto the target, and then you fire it, and it goes and tries to, tries to go after it. I do explain that your HMD is capable of providing high off bore sight capabilities to your um, to your your 9x but realistically that's going to be something that you learn on later on your own when you become better at fighting things up close realist honestly if you're if you're getting close enough that you need high off bore sight stuff you've probably done something wrong uh, so for the first time, for, for, for the training portion of this stuff, we're just going to practice using the 9, the 9 x as the traditional way. Then we cover how the tone works. You get a nice low growling tone at the first part of it, and then it jumps up uh, significantly when the weapon has found its target. It also talks about the circle that you use to line up your head, the, the, war the seeker head on your missile with the target, and then tells you to go to waypoint one, find the MIGs that are going to be orbiting out there. I got to find the MIGs that are going to be orbiting out here at waypoint one. Uh, do your best to shoot them down with your nine X's. As long as you kill one, the mission is done. And then you return to base and execute your ad nauseum case one recovery procedure. And the, for every landing that you've done, except for the very first landing, because there was a reposition that you did to get out to Vaziani from over here, just because we had to talk about how to land using the E bracket. Um, every landing that you did after that very first one has been a case one recovery, or you know we did one case three recovery um, practice in the navigation block. But by this point, you've done so many case one recoveries that it, it's just it, it should be second nature by now. And, when, and, I, and I did it that way so that by the time you actually go out and do it at the carrier, the only thing you have to remember is just to add the full th hey, we'll get to that. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, so next after that, we talk we talk about dogfighting. There's no real way for, unless I get really into the weeds learning. If you notice, I don't have any scripts. In, I don't have any scripting in here. Um, 
I do have some programming knowledge, but I haven't figured out how to use scripting in this because I can't figure out how to get the dependencies to, sh to load into this. So I keep getting errors where it's trying to reference or it's trying to reference things that don't exist and I can't figure out why. So anyways, um, there's no way for me to script in certain things like pauses and things like that. So I just, I kind of have to give you button presses where you just press a button when you're ready to hear the next thing. So I try to front load everything so that you have all the information by the time you get there and then hopefully you retain some of it. So for the dog fighting thing, I explain how dog fighting, you know, unless you're for, I know a lot of people like to do it for fun, but in the real world, dog fighting is a last resort tactic. It's the thing you do when everything else has failed and there's no way to get out of it. And you just have to try to kill the guy. I explain how, no matter what your skill level is, you all it takes is one tiny little mistake for things to not go your way and you get shot down. So I want to impress upon the pilot that it, although dog fighting is obviously really cool and if you're really good at it, that's great. But real world pilots aren't looking for a dog fight for real. They want to kill somebody far away because that's the safer way to do it. Um, we talk about how all right, so we talk about the two the two different types of circles when you're doing a fight. How you have a one circle where you're going nose to nose and a two circle where you're going uh, nose to tail against your enemy and how that kind of defines how you remember it. Because if you're going nose to nose, you're both basically in the same circle. And if you're going nose to tail, then it creates two slightly offset circles. And that's how that works. Um, I explain how the one circle is an AOA fight, how you're basically just trying to turn fast, turn, turn faster than the other guy and, and grab him. And now the two circle is a speed fight where you're basically trying to maintain maintain the appropriate airspeed to get your maximum turn rate over time and keep that. And basically just I, I explain to them that, yes, I know I understand this is hard to visualize, but as you practice it, it'll get better. <clears throat> then we talk about how we I, I, I this is where I talk about the airspeed with the two circle fight. Uh, 350 to 450 for a two circle fight in the Hornet is what I got out of my research for it. Um, I found that in my personal experience to kind of work sort of, but I'm not a good dog fighter, so I don't, I don't claim to know. And then there, as long as you kill the MIG, you pass the lesson. You do need for this one, you do need to get a good kill in a dog fight because the only thing you're equipped with for this mission is a gun. And it's good. This is, this is probably going to be a frustrating roadblock for a lot of students, but I did make it a very, I did, I did make it a MIG 21 which should be relatively easy to kill, I think. I think it should be relatively easy to kill. I mean, it's, it's a pretty old aircraft, <clears throat> and you're flying a Hornet. But um, this is why I'm posting these, because if you guys think that a MiG-21 versus somebody who's learning dogfighting is not appropriate, please leave a comment, because I don't know any better. <coughs> As I said... <coughs> Excuse me. As I said many times during this video series, the reason I'm putting this this flight school together is because I need to practice this stuff and I need to really learn this stuff. And putting these th putting this together is forcing me to practice and forcing me to learn and forcing me to get better at doing it. And by extension, those of you who are interested in purchasing this campaign will have the same benefit if you choose to take it seriously. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the dog fighting portion of it. Uh, you kill the MIG, you return, and as I said, ad nauseum, case one recovery. Case Every time you finish the mission, it's a case one recovery so that you get plenty of practice in before you ever get out to the carrier. Then we do a quick, um, we do a quick mission where we... The concept is just teaching you about that, how, uh, teaching you how terrain hides you from radar and how you can use terrain to block the enemy's ability to see you and block a missile's ability to see you if you dive down into terrain and use it to mask, your, mask yourself from it. So the premise of this is that you're basically just, you just need to get out to waypoint five or six, five. You need, to, you, need, you need to get out to waypoint five. There's an AWACS over here and there's a fighter over here who will come and attack you if you don't stay low. So there's a there's a trigger zone here that checks to see if you if you break 10,000 feet because I've set this up so that you can stay low and never go above 10,000 feet as long as you as long as you follow the path and stay down in the canyons and stuff and then you come back. 
So you, you should never get to the point where, well, I don't actually, now that I'm looking at it, I just, I just need to verify. I thought I, I'm pretty sure I checked it all, but let me just verify that I had to move my taskbar out of the way. I don't think, oh, okay. I'm going to have, I, this is, like I said, I need to test all of this stuff. So, um, obviously that's not going to work, <clears throat> but I think I can do a quick fix here. I just move that there, move that there. Because all of that's sub 10,000 feet. All of that is sub 10,000 feet. Sorry, I know you guys don't want to watch me fixing things, but I'm here and I might as well fix it. <clears throat> okay, so let me save that so I don't screw that up. But that's the basic premise of this particular of this particular one is uh, you're just you're learning the idea that you know while generally if you're if you're intending to fight somebody you want to be high and fast, but if you're trying to hide, sometimes going down and staying down in the terrain is a good idea. Um, so we talk about how radar and terrain work. We talk about, why is this called airspeed? Airspeed is critically, yeah, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I need to go back. I need, I need to go through and QC all of my stuff because I think I, I think I left stuff in here. Yeah. So most, I, I just need to delete these two buttons. Okay. And then there's a check at waypoint one to make sure to let you, to remind you, Hey, get down really low. Then there's these check things here that check your altitude while you're inside the block. And then at waypoint five, it says, hey, you made it. Go back to waypoint eight, fly back, do your KS1 recovery. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then since that was since those were pretty short, there's a practice exam and an air to air exam. They are both exactly the same. I made these both exactly the same because number one, controlling things is controlling the things are very difficult and the purpose of this is not to prove that you're an expert at it is to prove that you can do it without instruction. So <clears throat> both of these are basically the same. There is this, the, the, the simulated situation is, is that there are, there's a group of frogfoots coming in, trying to attack your base. And actually I need to move, I need to move it over here so that they go all the way in. Uh, there's a group of frogfoots. There's a, a flight of four frogfoots over here that are flying in to try to bomb your base. Your task is, is you need to fly out and take those guys out and prevent them from getting to you. They are being escorted by a single MiG-29. I have increased the difficulty by putting a by putting a more difficult opponent. Again, I don't know if that's appropriate or not. I just I wanted there to be some kind of difficulty progression as you got towards the end. So hopefully a MiG-29 is not too much for a relatively new person, but we'll see. Um, so ideally, <clears throat> the exam is you take off, you fly out here, you take out the MiG, and then once the MiG is done, you use your remaining ordnance to deal with the, uh, you use your remaining AMRAMs, uh, and INXs and guns to take out the Frogfoots before they are able to get over here. And as long as, as long as they're all dead by the time you're done, you can RTB. Uh, let's see. So yeah, the MiG has to die. All of the frogs have to die, and then you return and do your case one recovery ad not as we have ad, as we have ad nauseum. So that is the entire air to air block. Um, not really as com. Oh, why is that still there? Not really as complicated as some of the air ground stuff because air to air stuff isn't complicated. It just requires you to remember some basic concepts and then actually implement them. And that's not something that you can, it's not something you can instill through a training program. That's just something that you have to go out and practice a lot. <clears throat> so the air to air portion of this is not necessarily intended to make you a, a great BVR fighter, certainly not intended to make you a good, even a good dog fighter. It's to teach you the concepts so that you can at least go out there and have a decent chance at shooting some things down. As long as you remember how to use your radar, how to crank, how to use your countermeasures, how, when to go hot, when, or when to go cold, all of those things. And those are covered in this lesson and you should get something out of it. But in the end, Fighting other things is just a matter of practice and you just have to, you have to do it enough to get good at it. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the way that it is. Um, I think that the air to air portion in this covers a few more things than the training sessions that you got that came when you purchased the Hornet. And I think it presents it in a way that's a little bit more intuitive and easy to understand. And the fact that you're not just getting dropped into a situation with no context helps you to remember all of those things. 
I know it does for me because the, the problem with all of the lessons that we get that come with any of the aircraft is, is that they just, they drop you in so that you can immediately do the thing and then you teleport out of there and you're done. And there's no context. There's no work up to it. And you're, you're just kind of like overwhelmed by all of the information that's getting thrown at you. So I don't know. I just, I think the presentation isn't the best. So that's my opinion. You can feel free to disagree. Uh, so yeah, that's the air to air portion of the program. Next up is going to be the, is going to be, hold on. Next up is going to be, uh, the, the block four stuff, which is all the carrier stuff. So going, actually going out and landing on the carrier, practice landing on the carrier. We're going to cover aerial refueling and night ops. And I'm trying to come up with, to come up with a few other things to include into this block that maybe I've just either I forgot or just wasn't appropriate to include in other things because, you know, aerial refueling, refueling is extremely difficult to do. I haven't even, even tried that yet because it's just, it's, I know it's that hard. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make the block four stuff, all the last little bits of all difficult kinds of things, you know, doing operations at night. That's very hard for most people to do. So anyways, I know I'm rambling on. I need to get on to making the video for what I've made so far for this. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll have that published the day after whatever the day after this one is published. Um, again, thank you very much for your time. Be sure to click that like button if you think that this is good stuff and we can get the video sent out to more people so that they can either, they can become aware of it and know about it and hopefully think it's cool too. subscribe to the channel so you can follow as I continue to work on this and make it better and see it and do all these kinds of things. And I'm looking for cool idea ideas for suggestions for exclusive content. For those of you who want to support the channel, leave your suggestions for that down in the comments, along with your feedback for the video. Again, thank you very much for your time. And I hope to see you in the next one.